Attention ham radio operators. This video is to introduce a new mode of digital communications, Hellschreiber. Hellschreiber was just recently introduced in 1925. From the photograph, there can be little doubt about the country of origin, huh? The concept of Hellschreiber was invented and developed by a German, Rudolf Hell. That's right, that's his name. Born just after the beginning of the 20th century in Germany, Rudolf studied electrical engineering in Munich. As early as 1925, he demonstrated a basic form of mechanical television, but that was not to be his area of expertise. He invented the first Hellschreiber machine in 1925 and founded his own company and patented the device just four years later. During the Second World War, Rudolf reduced his machine to a portable version for the German Wehrmacht called Field Hellschreiber, or simply Feldhell. Among the many awards he received in his early years, two are the most telling, the Gutenberg Prize and the Siemens Ring. They are important because Gutenberg represents printing in general, and Siemens was involved in very early mechanical scanning. Both connections will become clear in a moment. But enough about the guy for now. What about the machine? Just what is Hellschreiber? Simply put, it is a two-part communications device. The first part translates keyboard input into a transmittable form of intelligence. The second part receives the signals and translates it into printable characters on a moving strip of paper, much like a ticker tape. Of course, everyone has one of these in their ham shack, right? About the name, there are two accepted stories. Personally, I prefer the first. Schreiber translates from German into writer. And Rudolf's name really is Hell, so it is Hell's writer. Hell also translates from German to bright, so it is possible that it really means bright writer. You need to remember what was happening at the conclusion of the war. Russian troops were advancing through Eastern Europe toward Berlin. Allied forces were advancing from the West. As the Allies moved through Germany, they captured scientists and their inventions. But the Russian mindset was different. They had suffered terribly at the hands of the Germans, and as they moved toward Berlin, they destroyed everything. Hell's factories were in the East. This picture is of a rare machine in a Russian museum. The left half is the Hellschreiber machine, the right half is the radio transceiver. They are now very rare indeed. Okay, history lesson over. Now, how does the damn thing work? The Hellschreiber machine contains a drive motor with a mechanical speed governor, a paper tape printer and a keyboard, and various electronic controls. Within the machine is a long horizontal shaft with 40 to 45 separate wheels mounted on it. Each wheel has individual raised areas that define the character. As a key is pressed, the wheel rotates twice and an appropriate switch is pulsed. As different keys are pressed, different patterns of pulses are generated, much like a player piano. Each character is defined by a 7x7 seven seven dot matrix. The columns are labeled A through G, the lines 1 through 7. So each column is subdivided into seven parts. The character is scanned out by columns, A1, A2, up to A7, then B1, B2, up to B7, and so on. This graphic depicts the letter E. As the wheel turns, the switch is presented with the arc of the wheel depicting column A. Note that there are no raised areas there. Then as the wheel advances and the switch is exposed to the arc depicting column B, the first one-seventh is not raised, but the area from the second seventh to the sixth seventh is raised, and the switch is closed. Then during the last seventh, it opens again. As the wheel completes the revolution, contact closure occurs, creating the letter E. Now each time the switch closes, the transmitter emits a carrier. It is exactly like CW. Key down, carrier on. Key up, carrier off. Switch closed, carrier on. Switch open, carrier off. Now let's look at the wheel for the letter X. Same wheel, same rotation, same idea. But the raised areas to close the switch are in different columns and lines. The technique is the same, but an X emerges instead. Remember, the wheel rotates twice. The reason for this will be explained later. Okay, we understand how the encoding part of Hellschreiber works. Now how about the decoder? A paper tape is pulled through the printer by a capstan at a predefined speed set by the DC motor. The paper is pulled past an open space with an inked double spiral roller. If you look at the surface of the spiral, there will be two points along that surface that will appear to be moving along the spiral axis. 
As one point disappears at the top, the second will be centered, and a new point will be entering from the bottom. Now the received transmission carrier is detected and converted back to a single voltage. On when the carrier is detected and off when it is not. That voltage causes an electromagnet to pull the paper tape into contact with the inked roller only when a carrier is detected, only when a bump on the rotating wheel in the sending unit engages the carrier. As the encoding wheel is rotating, twice, the double spiral inked roller is leaving two dots behind on the paper corresponding to the dot matrix definition of the letter being sent. Simple, right? Right? Like I said, what the Russians didn't destroy, the passage of time and the developments of newer methods have made Hellschreiber machines all but extinct. There are only a few left on the planet in working condition. What to do, what to do. When the computer muscled its way into the modern ham shack, a few interested software authors found a way to bring Hellschreiber back. Although a simulated transmission and reception, it uses everything that defines the old machines but substituted mechanics with software algorithms. The Europeans were delighted. The American crowd was slow to get interested, since Hellschreiber was hardly even known until now. We call it Hell, or Feld Hell now. Okay, let's take a look at a modern Hell transmission. Hell appears on the screen as an analog, and like all analog signals, they can be mixed. What you see here are two stations responding at the same time, but being visual, I can at least make out some of the call. Note his return is printed in two lines. Remember I told you the encoding wheel rotates twice per character. Might seem weird right now, but it will be clearer in a moment. Now here is a different transmission. It is very subtle, but you can see a slight downward drift in his received character string. The cause? Well, unlike RS-232 with clear start bits that tell me when a character is expected, hell is asynchronous, meaning the character will come when it comes and I get no particular warning. Also, I have to trust he is sending the bursts of carrier at exactly the same speed I am printing them. With modern computers, that is almost a given. So large drifts up or down are nearly unheard of. So if I can always see at least one line of text, why are there two lines in the first place? Well, remember, this mode was invented nearly 50 years before the WAS even thought about the 6800 or the 8080. Timing was set by a mechanical governor on a DC motor. Maybe the governor is off. Maybe the jeep voltage is a bit low. Maybe an allied bullet has smashed the motor case. Maybe the sender is typing and running for his life. Here's a case where the send and receive speeds were off 1.5%. The double lines mean that at least each character is clearly printed on the paper tape somewhere. It may be uncomfortable to the eye, but at least it's readable no matter how different the speeds are. Okay, on to the theory of the format itself. What mode is Hellschreiber? Well, it is officially called a fuzzy mode. The real truth of the matter is that no one can decide for sure what mode it is. Modes are generally listed by its basic modulation structure, AM, FM, CW, and then with added modifiers, single channel, dual channel, and then more possible modifiers. It can be clear, but all too often it's complicated and confusing. It makes my brain hurt. So a whole bunch of engineers got together and battled it out. Defining and redefining what Hellschreiber really is, or is not, or might be, or... Phew. Well, bottom line, they couldn't completely figure it out. So, wanting to go home and watch TV with a beer, they decided to call it J2B, and issued this statement and quit with the comfortable understanding that they had defined a fuzzy mode. Personally, I'm comfortable with it as well. So, where is Hell found? Well, the AWRL publishes a band plan, that places it in very specific locations in the ham bands. That's a good place to start. Not exactly a rule of law, but a gentleman's agreement that keeps a certain order to the chaos of radio. Consult the AWRL website for more detailed information about the band plan. I sometimes call Hellschreiber Hellskin Robins. There are so many different flavors of Hell to choose from. Modes can be like CW, carrier on or off, they can be FSK with a fixed SSB modulation frequency that shifts up or down. And the transmission speed can be cut in half to make the characters stretch out horizontally, or speed it up to make them thin and fast. You'll have to experiment and find the mode you like best, or, more importantly, the mode that more hams are likely to respond to. Standard speed felled hell with an aerial or a square font is the most standard.
Here's a little help you might find interesting. My webpage at www.brainmist.com slash K9ZXO has a great feature. All the basic digital modes are listed with a screenshot of what the waterfall looks like and a short MP3 recording of what it sounds like. For the ham who is new to digital transmission, this may help sort it all out in the headphones. Now, we need to talk about bandwidth. One reason to segregate the different digital modes is because they all have different bandwidths. CW takes almost no bandwidth, and some Olivia modes can take a whole bunch. All the others, hell included, fall in between. But here's a confusion. If, as far as the transmitter and antenna are concerned, hell and CW are the same, why does Feld Hell have so much more bandwidth? Well, obviously, hell must have a higher rise time on leading and trailing edges of the carrier bursts, right? Well, wait a second. That turns out not to be true. CW actually has a considerably faster rise time. So what gives here? If it isn't rise time, then what makes hell have a wider bandwidth? Well, here's the deal. The number of bursts coming out of the Hellschreiber encoding wheel are far more than the 3 to 5 bursts per letter coming out of a fast CW key. Think of it this way. AM bandwidth is a product of the modulating frequency, right? Look at the envelopes here and consider them as badly overmodulated AM signals. The Hell signal has far more elements per second than the CW. If you think of that as audio, the more elements per second mean a higher modulating frequency, which means, ta-da, wider bandwidth. So why should I use such an antiquated and little-used mode anyway? Fair question. Well, it's historically significant, and we as hams bear some responsibility to preserve it in some way. There is a practical reason as well. Since it is short pulses of carrier, it has one of the lowest duty cycles of any digital mode out there. Easy on the finals, for sure. It employs the human adaptive context decoder. That's you. It's like watching 1960s TV from a distant city. Even though it's 90% snow, you can still make out the cops and robbers. Hell is the same. Even a bad reception is often decodable because it employs your eye and brain to make sense out of that snowy image on the screen. There is a certain status in using a one-of-a-kind mode and probably being the only kid on the block who knows about it. Finally, it runs to the core of what being a ham means, doing whatever it takes to keep the hobby fresh and alive. I mentioned that the Americans were slow to catch on to hell. Here's a little proof. I'm member FH919 of the Feld Hell Club. Google them for much, much more information. I recently participated in an awards competition, a game of sorts. By adding up the grid square numbers of people I make hell QSOs with, I have received the bronze, silver, gold, and platinum Gridlock Hell Awards. Platinum requires 25,000 total grid square numbers. While I am proud of that, it's important that you look at the other winners. By far, the vast majority of the participants are not American. Interesting, huh? So how do I make a hell QSO? Well, the simple answer is to get on the air and call. But I have a trick that may help. I call it fishing for hell. Most current software has a feature called RSID, Read Solomon Identification. It's a short burst of FSK that precedes your transmission and identifies what mode it is. If the receiver is using RSID, they will get a notification that such and such mode has been detected at such and such frequency. I have gotten more responses from first-time hell users only because their RSID told them what to do. Now, the final word. Hellschreiber made history in May of 2015. I traveled to W1AW for the standard tour and found myself working as a guest operator. I asked the chief operator if I could use Hellschreiber, and he informed me that I certainly could, and that to his knowledge, it had never been done before. As luck would have it, among others, I made a Hellschreiber contact with my brother, K9PLX, on 15 meters. A great day indeed. <laughs>